Jackie Sorkig. Welcome back, everybody, to the final PGL of Spring 2022. Glad that the audience can hear me now as well. G2 is back, baby, and how? 12-0 and zero through the lower bracket, beating Rogue in the final. And I have the pleasure of talking to Dylan, Broken Blade, and Jankos. I'm going to go to Jankos first, just because I talked to you yesterday on PGL, Jankos. Um, is your mic on? Want to test? It's fine. It's, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, great. Uh, and yesterday we were talking and you were, of course, very happy with the win, but you said it doesn't mean anything if we can't win tomorrow. So how happy does it make you that you were able to raise this trophy once again? I'm happy. I'm not, to be honest. <laughs> to be honest, I feel like I'm more relieved that we made it because I felt like we were capable of winning the split the whole season, actually. Um, and we did have our ups and downs and we did have to learn quite a lot during the split, but I felt like we have the players that have what it takes to actually win. So I'm super happy that after losing to Fnatic, we were able to bounce back, grow as a team, every BO5 and, you know, show up with like a good performance in the finals. Mm -hmm. Cap said specifically that this title meant a little more to him, maybe, just because of last year and just because of the, the disappointments that you've also faced together with him. Do you share that sentiment? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm just happy because before we actually won the finals, we got to play against Perks, we got to play against Wunder. We didn't get to play against Miki, but we got to play against him in the regular season, right? So I'm just really happy that we managed to, you know, beat all the all G2 guys on the way, at mm -hmm. least the ones that were available in playoffs. Um, and yeah, I mean, we never knew, right? We never knew if it's time for like the fresh blood for the fresh teams to take over. And us, G2 still winning, I think now being the highest trophy team mm -hmm. in Europe after this game uh, or after the series, I'm super, super happy that we could prove ourselves and that even people that grow a bit older each year can still be good at the game. <laughs> You're only 26. So that's not all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, Broken Blade, we're going to take a look at some of the images from the series. We focused our storytelling a lot around Oduwamne versus you, but also specifically that your jungler spends a lot of time with you. So does Malrong. Um, how do you feel you've played this series specifically on your Orn? Um, <laughs> Machina. <laughs> I think that, um, I think in the, especially in the game three, I think I performed very well. I, I had the counter matchup into Jace, right? Which was mm -hmm. uh, with Orn. And I even got a solo bolo, right? Mm -hmm. And I think I've gotten a lot of solo bolos, actually. <laughs> which I'm very happy about. I think uh, Game 3 especially, I think I carried my team a little bit. Cool. Uh, but I think um, Odon especially, I think he actually performed pretty well in this in the series. And there was always like a challenge in lane, especially the game where he picked Gwen. Um, but I think I, I, I did hold myself and I think uh, I did what I needed to do, especially on the horn. <laughs> so. I'm pretty happy. Yeah. You now join a very, as you see, Jankos would still have to put his shoes on. I, oh my god. <laughs> you didn't knock yourself out this time, Jankos. So. Actually, it was close. I was feeling like really weak. I couldn't stand up. But, yeah. Oh no. Uh, this is great to see. The chair almost like goes. Uh, your, your coaching stuff is so crazy on your background stuff. Uh, but, Broken, what I wanted to ask you is you now join a very select group of players who win LCS and win LEC. <laughs> What is the secret sauce, and why do you think you were able to do it? <laughs> um, well, I mean, I think it's just, uh, I think I did join a group with people who want to win, and the organization who really wants to win, and uh, literally every single one of my teammates, I think, did everything in order to win, not even my teammates, the whole staff, uh, Dylan, Rodrigo, even the, the our, our management, it's just insane, and I think, we put so much effort and uh, hard work into the split. I think we started the split, I think, one or two months earlier than every other team, uh, scrimming against the Wells teams. And I think all of this effort that we put in finally has its rewards, right? Which is the, the trophy. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it feels great. Um, and I'm happy uh, that from last year where I went on a 10th place team uh, to being in the first place, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is just a crazy good feeling. and. Yeah, it's, I can't even describe it. Broken Blade was not the problem, I think this is clear <laughs> to say right now. Congratulations, absolutely crazy. Dylan, wow, third title overall. Um, congratulations. Can you reflect a little bit on the work you've done with this team? Because all I've heard from BB and from people before also is we just were all on the same page from a very early starting point. But I can imagine that is not easy when you're dealing with a core of Yankos and Caps that have been on this team for so long and then add those new elements. Um, 
I started working with the G2 like way back in like November, October, when they were basically blowing up the whole roster and trying to rebuild the team. And um, I lived through the whole process of trying out against the world's teams, scouting players, like finding gems like Flacket and Targa, who are like, I'm so happy with their performance. And then through like the struggles of the regular season, where I think we all actually thought that we'd be this dominant from the start. Um, that's actually what we thought, but it was hard. We had to fix a lot of issues. We had to fix um, integrating our newer players into our team. We had to work out how to draft, how to play. And everyone just put in so much work to just guarantee that by now, we would be where we needed to be. Okay, super impressive. You mentioned uh, Flacket and Targamas, and I do think that Lore is ready to talk to them right now. So let's take a look. Thank you. Thank you, Jax. Back to this side of the studio for a bit because I have the winning bot lane from G2 Esports. First, guys, congrats on winning today, LEC champions. First title for both of you, so Flaked, first thoughts on winning the LEC for the first time? I mean, it feels amazing, uh, especially because <laughs> I didn't win anything in all my career. So, you know, like my first title being an... <laughs> like, my first title, like being, you know, like... LEC, uh, like Spring Split, is like it just feels amazing. Yeah, I guess yeah, you have to start somewhere and starting with the LEC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, find Target Mass, you, you've been used to winning last year. Uh, in France, especially, how does this one feel? I mean, to me, it just feels uh, amazing because I didn't have the easiest. Oh. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, do I hold? Oh, I'll keep it. <laughs> I didn't have the the easiest time in esports, uh, like the past years, but ever since. Uh, I joined K-Corp last year, it's just been a dream come true because I've only been winning. I won back to back in Master and now got picked up by G2 and now I win LEC. So, so I don't know, like the past year and a half has just been a dream come true and I hope that it, I, I will keep going, maybe for MSI also, hopefully. We'll get back to MSI a bit later, but yeah, hopefully this is the start of a new journey for you. Flaked, um, Dylan was mentioning how Really cool. It was working with you this split, and how he was happy to have you in the lineup. What did you learn uh, from your first split in the LEC so far with G2, especially? I think the the thing I learned the most it was um, uh, how to be, you know, like uh, more demanding, like uh, demanding the resources I need uh, in order to, you know, like get through lane phase or get or carry the game. Like um, especially at the beginning, um, like you can see in so many games in regular split when. Targa is just going top lane and I'm not calling anything and I, I just get denied like four waves. Uh, we go Herald and I lose full tower. Um, like it happened <laughs> so many times. But at least, you know, I, I learned when it mattered most, that, uh, which is playoffs. So yeah, I would say that uh, demanding what I need is what I learned most. And you two found each other and within the team when it mattered, especially in playoffs, Targamas, you were saying that this is, I mean, you've been used to winning, but still this is a comeback for you. I remember your time at Giants in the LEC back then. Uh, I guess you feel more comfortable now. Where do you see the m improvements, especially within this G2 lineup, but also with the level of play, of play that you had? Because the team trusted you a lot and it reflected on the drafts also. Um. <laughs> I guess you guys can share it. It's easier. <laughs> um, Thank yeah, you. I mean, as I said, I'm just uh, grateful for the for the team, uh, like the trust they put yeah. in me, because it's always something that I was lacking in my team in the past. Uh, and the fact that in the team, everyone, the, the, every player, the staff, the management, like everyone, just trusts me on how I do stuff. It it just motivates me even more to to prove them that they're right to put their trust in me. And yeah, uh, I don't know, From I think I just grew up a lot uh, from my past experience yeah. in esports. Uh, and yeah, I don't know, I'm just really grateful for, for my team. Like it, you were agreeing with him. Is there anything you would like to add on that? And huh? the, you were agreeing with him just now. Is yeah. there anything you would like to add on that? And also the synergy that, that you guys build together? And the, I mean, we'll I really love playing with Targa, you know, I think it's like the, the best support in Europe. As I said on Twitter, it's the Belgian career. So I'm really grateful okay. for everyone, but especially for Targa, like he helped me a lot. And, uh, you know, I wish I can still keep learning from him. Mm -hmm. Well, next up for you, Korea, as we mentioned previously, uh, first international event for both of you, actually. What are you looking forward to, Flaked? I mean, personally, I really want to beat <laughs> SKT, of course. Uh, 
Um, but yeah, I mean, I think uh, it's gonna be like so helpful, uh, especially for me. Like I never had like international experience. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I, I I just hope, and I'm gonna like put all the work uh, that we that we make Europe proud at the MSI. So yeah. You will, of course, of course. Targama, same question before we send it back to Shox. What are you going to do with Gumayoshi and Keria? And <laughs> what are your expectations for MSI this year? Uh, well, I think it's going to be a fun matchup. I think Keria, I really respect him a lot because he's kind of the one, uh, the, the support that plays also a lot of weird stuff uh, like I like to do. So um, I think like, I'm really looking forward to play against them and to, to learn from them. But overall, like, I'm just really happy going to, to MSI with my team and I'm really confident because I think what we showed in the, the past series is like really, really good gameplay. So like I, I know some people are still doubting us and I know some people are still saying that LEC is not going to be great, but so far we're 12-0. Uh, and <laughs> I just think yeah. like I'm just really, really hopeful for MSI. Yeah, and we're lucky to have you as representatives. Guys, thank you so much for joining me for this interview. Flaget, thank you so much for assisting me with the mic <laughs> building. You. And Shox, back to you. Thank you so much, Laura. Shout out to Laura also, sick job at all the interviews. Uh, and since she was talking to Targamas and Flaket, we can move over to the MasterCard play of the week because it was Targamas' triple kill on Pike in their champion winning push to hoist the 2022 LEC trophy. So let's take a look at that. Um, yeah, does, do you guys want to comment on it actually? I know from like a backstage perspective, yeah. when we're 2-0 in the series and we start winning a fight, like I have no idea what happens in the fight. We're just all going completely <laughs> crazy backstage. Broken Blade? Uh, for me, like this fight, I think Braum uses the shields, and then I was screaming for Jinx, 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 Jinx. And then I think after that, it's just really easy to... The reset city. Yeah, the resets. And uh, yeah, it, it actually felt really good to kill him, yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. know about Biancos, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think this was the point where we actually got very excited. Before that, the game was quite difficult to play, but at, I think this moment we all started screaming and, you know, kind of killing Jinx. And yeah. the game just went well for us. Uh, Targama said there that he, he was happy also the trust that was given to him in terms of kind of the freedom and the picks, right? Um, yeah, can you say something about how it was working with him? <laughs> saying that, hey, it was hard for me before, but now I just started winning and you saw that um, promise this year. Um, Targa is a player with a, a lot of ideas on draft, a lot of ideas of what he wants to play. Um, he wants to be very in inventive with picks. Um, a lot of the picks, like... Not all of them go, end up going through to the final draft. Some of them are just completely off the wall crazy. But it's so amazing working with players like Targa that can play every champ in the game. Because it gives you so much power in the draft phase to do stuff like we did in this run where we're counterpicking support and getting a lot of good matchups. So uh, mm -hmm. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, do you feel that uh, the depth of champion pool is like the whole team? Yeah, and I think that's actually a large reason in the last few sets we've been so dominant. Mm -hmm. um, I think we go against enemies sometimes where they just don't play one or two really key champions and we can utilize that in the draft and draft around it and get drafts that maybe we shouldn't get if they could play those champs. Yeah, but then BB gets put on Orn every single game yeah. in that previous series. Um, but it seems to me that you have like a reinterpretation of Orn, I almost want to say, right, in the way you play him. Do you enjoy it uh, as much as we do uh, watching it? We, we call it Assassin Orn. Assassin that's what we, that's Orn, what we call okay. It. <laughs> well, I mean, for me, like a lot of people know me as uh, the carry player rights, uh, even though in, wow. in the in the in, wow. the, uh, in the time, um, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I think actually uh, Targamas was a big point of why I wanted to even play on because he was so uh, like um, he was really saying, guys, tanks are OP. I think let's play tanks. And I was like, nah, it's not OP, dude. You know. And then I started playing on, and I noticed like. I was actually kind of smurfing. <laughs> I mean, my teammates uh, can uh, agree, right? But uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I don't even know, like they, they actually banned it as well in one of the uh, games today. Mm -hmm. And I think they did a big mistake leaving my Orn up, right? Uh, Broken Blade Orn is going to be remembered from this point. <laughs> Love so, it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm happy playing Orn and solo killing people, right? Yeah. Maybe we can do the edit. You have like the top father and then now there's like an orange picture behind that or something like that. Yeah, maybe, Someone maybe get we'll on it. The internet will do it. Um, Jankos, today going into this matchup, it was a lot about Malrang versus Jankos. It was all about the best jungler in the regular season. I think that's safe to say in Malrang, who made a lot of heads turn and how you would deal with him. This does actually make you the best jungler in LEC again right now. Um, what do you think it was that allowed you to step not only above him, but over every other jungler in playoffs? Um, 
I mean, I just don't think it's a single player game. So I just feel like we play better as a team and the decisions we made throughout the split and the fact that we were enabled to play, like Dylan said, many champions on every role, I felt like every draft was good. Mm -hmm. And it didn't really matter what I exactly play, but it just mattered that we are going to the game knowing that, oh, we will have these five champions and these five champions are going to be strong against enemy five champions. I think it's something we really, really liked last year where we had like draft hell. This year we have draft heaven oh. again. Um, so yeah, yeah, I'm just happy with everyone's performance. And I just think that my individual performance um, does not matter as much, as much as team performance does. Okay, that's very nice of you to say. I, I do think you absolutely smurfed it <laughs> these playoffs. And I think the fans will think that as well. Uh, a couple of more things. Dylan, um, Caps won the Kia player of the, or finals MVP rather. There was actually uh, experts that voted on it and he got 46, 47. Wow out of the 48 votes that were cast. I don't know who the stray other one was, but you, of course, won your titles alongside Caps. What can you tell us about the resurgence of Claps? Um, I feel like when Caps is enabled in both the draft, um, emotionally with his teammates, um, he's just one of the most insane players to ever, ever touch League of Legends. And I'm really grateful to get to work with him again. And not only that, but it's really cool for me because I get to work with a player such as Caps that I worked with before and won with, um, some new player like BB that I worked with but didn't win with, and then some new players that are just new to LEC. It's like such an amazing mixture, and I'm just, uh, I don't know, I'm just grateful to work with Caps again. Oh, absolutely. Uh, let's talk a little bit about MSI, then I'll let you guys go to celebrate with your team. Yanko, so I'll go to you first maybe. Um, you've been in different iterations of this G2, uh, which have both had success internationally and failures internationally. This is starting to let the fans dream again. You know, a 12-0 and zero run in the playoffs is not something easy to do. In fact, it's pretty unbelievable. How much confidence does that give you coming into MSI and what are your expectations? Mm, well, I mean, I don't really think that we actually ever had like super bad results internationally. Like we won MSI in 2019 and then we always went to at least semis at Worlds, which yeah. maybe is not great, but it's also not bad, you know, looking at some other regions that good. never made out of groups. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I feel like... My expectation is to go and learn from Owner a little bit. I think that he's a very good player and I'm looking forward to face him. But besides that, we have a team from LPL, which are, I mean, we, we don't know yet, right? Could be like Rookie and, and Karsa. Mm -hmm. and so, you know, two great players as well. But yeah, I'm oh, super excited, right? I'm just looking forward to Masai. I'm looking forward to learning from all these players and looking forward to grow even more as a team and as myself. Yeah, I'm glad you said it because I think we... We want the most, but you actually did really well at international events, right? I think that's just that highest accolade that we yeah, all Yeah, I mean, I just don't know like, what is expected of us, right? If it's expected to, uh, to, for the Western teams to win, yeah, of course we didn't. We are yeah. bad. But if it's expected to like be competitive, I think G2, every time we went to international event, we were competitive. Um, last year, well, we just got um, smashed, <laughs> smashed. Like we just didn't play well, right? But yeah, this yeah. year we are back. So I think that's super fair to say, and, and this has been a lot of success in G2's international uh, future. Broken Blade, you get to go to MSI with a G2 as well. Uh, with what all of you have talked about in terms of the development and in terms of how far this team can go, what are your realistic expectations, knowing that it's the best teams from around the world? Um, honestly, I don't know. It's going to be my first time in MSI. Uh, I was close once in uh, 2019, <laughs> but we got reversed with the finals. Um, anyway, I, I, I'm very uh, proud to be even going there with my teammates. I think we're going to do well, no matter how uh, the situation is going to be. I think it might be hard in the beginning, but I trust me and my teammates to, you know, learn, adapt and actually get stronger because we did it against Fnatic. They beat us. They were better at that time. And then we learned from them and then we just three out everybody, right? And I think we can do similar things in MSI. And it's always a fun experience, in my opinion, to, to go somewhere with your teammates and travel and do this and that. It's always great. Um, so I'm very, very excited. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if you won the LEC championship by learning from the European adversaries, I'm so excited to see what's going to happen if you scrim the best teams in the world. Like, uh, I think all the fans can be very excited. So, and a final note, who would like to take the words to thank the G2 fans, who were probably... I don't know. I don't want to say doubtful in the beginning of the season, but maybe a little like, oh, what's going to happen here? Do you want to do it, Jankos? I mean, I cannot wait. Which camera? Uh, what the light is. Okay. So um, I know that all of you were very doubtful, especially after last year, miserable performances where we couldn't really make it to Worlds, not MSI. Um, and we tried rebuilding this year and it actually worked out. Hopefully now you will have a little bit more trust. Maybe the fans that left us will come back. Maybe we got some new fans. So I'm very grateful. I also know many, many people stayed and I know that many people trust our process or even if 
they doubted our process. They still wanted to support us because, you know, we are G2. We are the team to support. So, yeah, thank you very much. And um, I'm hoping that we can show up even more during MSI and during Summer Split. Awesome. Um, let's take our last PGL selfie. Um, I shall do that from here. Awkward silence because I can't hold the mic. Awesome, thank you so much. And uh, I also would like to thank everybody who's here uh, and all the fans. I can't thank you enough for coming here. I am so happy that we could put on this show for you, that we could put on this amazing show and that we get to see you in person again. It is making my heart so warm and I hope in summer we can do it every single week. We've missed you so much. Thank you for coming back and thank you to G2 for PGL and congratulations to G2. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We're winning the 2022 spring season. Good night, good luck, and have fun. History remembers the greatest heroes, the ones that laid everything out on the battlefield. Three weeks of action, eight best of fives to declare a new champion. The lineup for the spring playoffs is the strongest that we have ever seen. Let the LEC Spring 2022 playoffs begin. Oh, hang on, here it is. He's right. dead. Odo Omne with the solo kill. Calipers, stopwatch. Larson goes the long way around with the last code of his own, and another stopwatch comes out. Slutton down. VTO pops the stopwatch, but he will fall as well. Larson flashes. Neon dashes, but Larson takes the kill. They win topside. They're winning mid. Misfits are alive. Slutton looking for the kick. Odo Omne back into the team. Oh. Here's Malrang with ultimate. Yeah, I don't think Misfits won out on it in the end. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Hibbit is in a good position for the slicing mouse, but you've got to find it. Hibbit goes in, slicing mouse on the fit, going out, and Oriano's already dead. The shutdown is the second for Vitio. They continue to fight. The cop is still alive on the back line. Semi has 400 years behind her belt. Even the entirety of Misfits cannot kill her. Rogue will lock their spot as a top three team in Europe. Why on earth? Does the LEC always talk about G2 and Fnatic? Fnatic versus G2 always delivers. Both of them went through huge changes. Fnatic and G2 have defined the LEC for over a decade. I will take them all down. Yeah, cause maybe a little bit overextended, but once again, the lock is shield. Oh, up to the Guardian oh. shield, into the Broken Blade TP, onto the backline with an R. Caps low on HP, he's down, set flashes. Caps goes down. Fnatic set up a date with Rogue next week. It is do or die for both teams in this best of five series. A loss would eliminate them from playoffs. South Blade escapes with his life for now. The perch is blown up where he stands. Kazi will get resurrected. Just like that, Vitality fall apart. Can Vitality bring it back? It feels like I've been asking that question for nine weeks now. Kazi's gonna gale force forward and LeBron gets the final kill. Kazi, he doesn't get the kills, but he is the one that kills them all. Mickey's now trying to run away for his life, but Perks will get revenge on his former teammate for last <laughs> game. All season, this super team has danced with disappointment, but today they dodge defeat and Vitality take down XL. I personally feel obligated to not allow G2 to win a split as long as I'm playing in the LEC. I feel that's like my job. Tonight, two of Europe's greatest mid laners of all time, Caps and Perks, will face off to decide who will advance and whose title hopes will already be buried. I had three years of people telling me I was G2 biased. I'm here to flip <laughs> the script. It's vitality. Caps still surviving on 100 HP, but Ooh. it's not enough to escape from Perks, who picks up his first kill of the game. Target yeah, of the world goes across himself. Yeah, Cos, looking for it! Yeah, 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 gets it! Yankos gets the Baron and keeps G2's hopes of winning this game alive. Dragon is started up. Oh, gonna start it on it. Yankos looking for the steel cap. Oh, Caps! No! Wait, does Caps steal that from over the wall? He gets the Hextech soul for G2. Perks is not with the team and they leave him alone as he watches his team die in the mid lane. They will destroy Vitality and meet up with Misfits on Sunday. The next weekend you get to play in front of a crowd again. 
I don't think we actually lose the U5 in the EU oh. with Kraft. I don't think we did. Rogue and Fnatic are playing a best of five. It's the winner's match, it's the king's match. Trimpy, the flash is there, but it's a little bit too late. <laughs> Upset grabs the kill. Hinosaki is the king of canceling bases. When you think you're canceling him, he's actually doing the one up on you. Here he Noah is. Noah Sang should be an easy kill pickup. They're oh, gonna kick oh, him oh. Gets the one shot. No, he's still gonna escape. The rocket. the rocket, not quite enough. Humanoid. And there's Hinosang in the darkness, waiting, finding the resets. He sees the opportunity. Yoda Warmint coming in with the TP, but he's just a mini NAR. The kickback, the shutdown. It's massive. Upset now moving. Oh, no, oh, no. Now finish off. It's personal from the Shalka days. You can tell he wants it more than anything, and he's gonna find it. Two members standing, and it's Rogue up in the end. Let's pray for four more of those crazy games. God of League of Legends. Four more 50 minute games. Is that what you wanted, Ender? Wonder. Holding on for a while there. Can't walk rockets, forward. Rockets, 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 rockets. Oh, there it is. No. What? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, oh. baby. Trippy. Looking for the engage. Looking for the engage. Quickness has been proxed. He's going to find at least one. Upset now goes over the wall and he'll survive for now. Mega Nar on the way, but can he find a target? Upset no flash and Odo knows it. Reset's going to come through. Knock back to the wall. Hillisang is there just in time, but now they're all out of damage. Comp still standing strong. Rogue will be the final boss in the LEC. Whose title dreams will crash and burn? Let's find out. And Misfit Gaming takes on G2 Esports. Misfits reckon they've got a time. They find one. Looking for all. No video. All of a sudden, Broken Blade's running for his life. Gekos is so incredibly low. Chagamas stays alive just a couple seconds longer and Whoa. finally Misfits punish G2. The dragon is going low and the oh. it's stolen. It's been picked up. Mega Death Rocket goes out to great sidestep from Herod. Glacial Pot oh. into the first W. Caps locks up Neon. The kills are secured. Beautiful catch from Caps. G2 obliterate Misfits. It is my pleasure to present to you the ultimate European heavyweight clash. The Crown! Oh, here we go. This looks like it might just be it. Humanoid making it out to safety. Full control of the midway. Flack at the Gale Force forward. That's a mark on the Humanoid. Boom, baby! Aphelios damage. Oh, they're going to do it. They're going to do it. Oh, they're going to do it. Here it comes. Berlin! Make some noise! What a banger are we in for? Rogue and G2 Esports clash it out for the final battle of the season in order to find out who will lift the trophy. It's gonna be a banger. And Rogue looking hungrily at the dragon. Can they secure it? Can they steal the soul away from G2? They don't have a jungler. Larson slides in, but Caps dives back. A double for Caps, a soul for G2. Caps is playing like a man possessed these last couple of weeks. First they came for Vitality, then for Misfits, then for Fnatic, and now the death of Rogue is written in stone. G2 claim their ninth title. Rogue is down, T1 is next, G2 booked their ticket to MSI.